context is everything, right? If you want to have an accurate things, you have all the discussion about context engineering and everything like that. And basically, the IP is almost coming from your context and not from the LLM because LLM become like, you know, uh, kind of like a commodity in, in some way. Welcome to It's About Data, episode 33. This time we're joined by Francois Lopito of ThoughtSpot to discuss the open semantic interchange. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we are joined today by our special guest, Francois Lopito, who is SVP of, of product management over at ThoughtSpot. I hope I finally got that correct after about four or five times here. Uh, <laughs> Never good on the corporate hierarchy. But anyway, we're here to discuss um, a new initiative that's been unveiled by Snowflake, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, DBT, uh, Salesforce, uh, and ThoughtSpot. It's the open semantics you know, you know, interchange. We like to talk about that um, and like what this really means. Um, but before we go into this, Francois, can you tell us a little bit about your role and your background there? Yeah, sure. Um, so my role, I'm in charge of um, half of the product at ThoughtSpot. So I have my counterpart, Bhargav, in India, and so I'm based in Mountain View. And I oversee our agentic solution, I oversee our data layer, and also um, how our customers can embed analytics into their own product. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like my area of coverage. And I have a you know background. I come to the U.S. about 16 years ago uh, when, as a company I was working for, got acquired by Salesforce. So I had the pleasure to uh, to move to San Francisco uh, uh, via Salesforce, where I spent 11 years of my career there to build product from service cloud to analytics to AI. And uh, and then I moved to a small, uh, small startup uh, to have some fun there. Uh, most recently was more like a data security uh, startup called Odaseva, where I, I worked for five years. And so since now almost a year, I'm at Sotspot, uh, joining, you know, I, I really enjoy the data and uh, analytics and BI space. So it was really a pleasure to go back to Sotspot to this space, especially in this, you know, iconic companies right now where Agentic is kind of like leading the way. Okay, that's... And agents are quite a powerful term this year all yes. of a sudden. Yes. But, but let's actually, there's one point I've been just dying to make here, which is OSI. Where have we heard that before? It was the Oprah Systems Interconnect. Remember the seven layer model of which basically, uh, I think what we're going to be talking about today, there's actually a connection that is layer seven, the application layer, I believe mm, this maps yeah. to. Gosh, do we remember all that? And then there was the open source initiative, like what's open source? Um, and now we're talking about something different with semantics. So can you tell us basically a little bit about what this is about? Yeah, I think, you know, at first I think like it's a comeback of the semantic layer a little bit, I feel. Uh, you know, like it, it's, uh, it was not so much popular uh, a year ago or two years ago. Uh, and now with the rise of Agentic, and especially in the BI market, I think it's like, you know, from my perspective, from the BI market, a semantic layer is now so much like important uh, because before, you know, originally speaking, you had a dashboard where analyst was kind of like curating the data, uh, putting the data together inside a dashboard to show it to the business users, right? And they were kind of like curator of it. But now that people are querying directly the data through agents uh, and through LLM, then you need to have this curated view of your data. Mm -hmm. And now this curated view became your semantic layers. So the dashboard was before, and now the semantic layer is a guardrail and really like the, the, the protector of your data and also giving like sense of your data. So I think mm -hmm. that's why, you know, the semantic layer is rising. And at some point, funny enough, when I joined, uh, we were not speaking much about the semantic layers. And after I, I worked there, I was like, Hey guys, you know what? You have an amazing semantic layers. We should speak about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we started to, you know, to, to speak about it, uh, six, five months ago, because I think it's critical, uh, a piece become critical piece. And, um, and so it's, uh, you know, and then when you start to understand, like, how important is it? Obviously, then every customer needs to create one. Now you have the bingo of, okay, where do I create my semantic layers? You yeah. know, I have my cloud data warehouse there. I have 
you know, if I have a semantic layer also like like uh, DBT or at scale, I am purposely like buying a semantic layer because I want to share it across my own companies. Or in my BI tools, I also have semantic layers. So you end up with four or five different layers where you can have your semantic layers. And then as a company, it became like a nightmare. It's like, okay, where do I manage my semantic layers? Uh, where is the source of truth? Uh, you know, what should I do about it? Should I buy, you know? So that's really where comes this OSI is from the fact that, you know, recognizing that we need to help our customers. We need to help our customers to not have, because, you know, the semantic layer need to be in multiple area, cannot be just in one application, right? So we need to come up with a format which makes super easy to share it cross applications. So it's really like a vendor agnostic approach where it's really from the point of view of customers, we really want to help them to say, okay, you don't have to decide where you want to have your source of truth or you you don't want to be locked in with one specific vendors because you have created your semantic layer there. You need to be open. And then if us as vendors, we can come up with a format that easily you can have it in Snowflake and then have it easily in Satspot have it in easy somewhere else, then our customer would be super happy. So that's really like the why this OSI exists and why I think it's going to be uh, transformative in our market. It's interesting. I mean, you get to what really has been the Achilles heel of semantic layers for a long time. Everyone has thought they were a good idea for a long, long time. But the whole point of semantic layers is to bring together many products. And yet you had 50 different products that wanted to own the (laughs) semantic layer all competing with each other. Now, it sounds like you have worked with semantic layers in the past before you got to ThoughtSpot. Am I gathering that correctly? I think so. my yeah. my big point is actually, yeah, I mean, I obviously I work on all other AI products and mm-hmm. VI products, mm-hmm. so semantic was all the time a, a great thing. But I yeah. think it's in ThoughtSpot more specifically because, you know, like the company got created some times ago with the premise of you should be able to search on your data like you search on Google, which was, yeah. you know, like the initial messaging. Which means, like at the time, to make this promise possible, Thoughtspot created the semantic layers. So, but nobody called it the semantic layers. But we had to because we know Thoughtspot is doing live yeah. query. Uh, we can cache data, but mostly our customers are doing live queries on top of Cloud Data Warehouse. And you need to be able to do obviously queries very simply because again, we have the search experience which means our users are business and users, right? And they need to be able to say like sales, monthly, country, and us on our side, we need to translate this into a SQL query. Yeah. Joining the right table in the right order and, and do a lot of great stuff. And for that, we had to create these semantic layers to be able to have a map of all the tables that you know belong to the sales data set, like grouping all together the right information that our customers can just use keywords and we can generate the SQL behind the scene. So because of that, we had to create a semantic layers. And so we have, you know, I was, it was funny when I look at our semantic layers, we had more than 60 different keywords to define the semantic layers. So semantic layers can be very (laughs) deep, right? It's not just like join and it's much more than that. And if you think about this complexity and you multiply by 10 tools, you will kind of understand the nightmare of our customers. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about metadata interchange. We've been talking a lot about basically about catalog interchange. Where does this pick up and, the, and those leave off? What, what do you mean by that? Sorry. Well, basically, we've been, you know, there have been a lot of basic proposals, you know, for instance, mm-hmm. like you know, Databricks has had this proposal for, you know, for Unity catalogs, being sure, a catalog yeah. of catalogs. Everybody yeah. has their own catalog that claims to be the you know, a catalog of catalogs. And the idea is you should be able to find data through that. And of course, you have, you know, business glossaries um, and so on. Um, and below that, you have knowledge graphs. Where does this pick up and all those other you know, you know, you know, pieces you know, leave off? And not to say those other pieces aren't important. Maybe you can say where it picks up and where they left yeah. and, and how they all basically relate to each mm. other. Yeah. I think the, I, the way I take it is semantic layer is really like the, the, the core of everything, right? Mm-hmm. It's core for being able to understand your model to be able to generate the right SQL queries, to be able to generate the right analysis. And for catalogs, they need also to be able to, you know, uh, like index kind of like your semantic layers to be able to drive, you know, where's where's the data coming from? Where, uh, what is the finification of this metric? So I see really like the cat- data cataloging sitting on, on top of the semantic layers. 
and be able to take the information from the semantic layers to be able to create their catalog. So it's empowering them also to be able to better uh, provide dictionaries and things like that. Got it. Okay. Let, let me ask this as well. So a, as you mentioned, um, ThoughtSpot has been in the semantic layer space for a long time. I mean, that, that's kind of a core part of the product for years. I know you're relatively recent there, but I imagine you have a perspective on the history. How have the customer conversations changed in the last couple of years with LLMs and more natural text interaction? I, I think that, um, I think first that, you know, for a very long time, semantic was not like the core of everything. Mm -hmm. And because again, you know, for my market, like the BI market, right, people were using dashboard as kind of a semantic layers. So semantic was kind of like a second thought. It's like, okay, is it, does it belong to the data analyst? Does that belong to the data engineers? It was kind of fuzzy yeah. also a little bit. So nobody yeah. was really owning it kind of. We had to build one in ThoughtSpot, but we never called it semantic layers, right? So people had to create it. And it was more like the analyst was going to use it, but it was only dedicated for ThoughtSpot. It was not used somewhere else, right? So now I think with the LLM and the rise of LLM, Everybody understand that this is a requirement and this is a mandatory requirement because if you want to have an accurate uh, agent, you need to uh, to be able to have um, uh, a semantic layers that can bring the context. And, you know, as everybody's realizing these days, context is everything, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to have an accurate things, yeah. you have all the discussion about context engineering and everything like that. And Basically, the IP is almost coming from your context and not from the LLM because LLM become like, you know, uh, kind of like a commodity in, in some way. So it's all about the context and the context is coming from the semantic layers. So this piece is really like the, the, the fuel for the agentic engine. Yes, yeah, so we've had many con conversations here um, with various folks about, you know, talking about you know, essentially a context, you know, semantics. And your colleague, Cindy Housen, Put out a great post when this came out, uh, and her tagline was "Semantics is sexy again." And uh, <laughs> it's, it's really amazing because basically, she was there. She had a ringside seat. You know, basically, she was running BI Scorecard all those years and really yep. traced the evolution from business objects to universe. It's it's amazing. But anyway, what I want to look at is where we are now and where we're going from here. So there, this is a two part question, which is like. How well specced out is uh, is OSI? Because what I've been reading, the blog posts are very general. They seem to be very focused on principle. So how well defined is this at this point? Where does it stand? And what can we expect to see over the coming year? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, we announced it, uh, I think, like now a week ago or two weeks ago. Uh, so we have, you know, we are going to have our first meeting, uh, you know, next month where we are going to be able to share the principle, share also like, you know, how do we execute on that? How do we take what everybody is doing already and how we combine this, you know, uh, smart, uh, smart features and smart things into a, a tactical and executionable uh, paper about the format. So I would say it's really like, you know, new, nascent. I think everybody and all the participants and all the vendors, we have great experience. We have great things to share uh, from our different angle. So, you know, from the cloud virus angle, from the BI angle, from, you know, the the pure, like with also the pure semantic players, which also are part of the of this initiative. So I think we are just going to, you know, uh, share all this in common. And again, this is for the greater good of the customers. So, you know, the target is to be really like vendor agnostic. It needs to be universal. It needs to apply to every type of use cases. So I think it's a great exercise. I'm super, you know, motivated for that because it's a great thinker coming together to uh, to build something cool. So it's it's going to be pretty cool. Nice. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, at some point, we, we may want to have a follow up conversation when this actually starts to roll out to customers. We're excited for this. Yeah, this definitely very much sounds like a work in progress. So definitely, let's see where you guys are going. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.